Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to find out why neural networks are considered universal function approximators by looking at some very basic building blocks. First of all, I believe that all of you are familiar with the sigma e function and if you are not, you can check the links in the video description to find out more. In a nutshell, the sigma e function takes as input a real value between minus infinity and plus infinity and outputs a kind of soft step function, converging to zero as x approaches minus infinity and to one as x approaches infinity. Now let's create a simple neural network. So we have an input x, the weight w and the basis b, and the sigma e function as an activation function. The neural network transforms the input x as described in the equation below, obtaining the output y. Some of you that are familiar with how neural networks work may have noticed that I extract the basis b before I multiply x with a w, which is not that common. But I do that simply because ordering the equation like that makes the computation easier since it closely follows the logistic function, which has some nice properties that are useful for the purpose of this video. One thing that we can do with this equation is to vary the weight w in this network and if we do that then the shape of our function changes becoming steeper and steeper as we increase w. Also we can keep fix the weight w to a high value so that the output of our small network closely resembles a step function. Let's say that we set w equal to 100. Now we can play with the value of b and if we do that we can see that its role is to shift the place where the step happens. However, for neural networks to be able to approximate functions, another building block must be added. Namely, to add another neuron with its weight a on top of y. The role of this neuron is to say how big of a step to take and you can see this behavior on the right image. Finally, the last building block is to add more neurons to the hidden layer. Here I add another neuron and one little trick that you have to take is to use another base b for it. You can see that for the first neuron we have a base value of 0, while for the second hidden neuron we have a base value of 1. Thus we are able to control when each step happens and you can see on the right image an illustration of how the output of this neural network looks like when we vary the weight of the first step A1 and keep the weight of the second step A2 fixed. Basically, what you do by varying A1 is to select the best approximation of our function on that point. Of course, we can also do the opposite, keep A1 fixed and vary A2 and thus select the next step approximation on that point. We can further extend this logic and add yet another neuron with a different basis and by varying its weight to the output, we can select another best step approximation of our function. I hope that you can see how these building blocks give rise to a pretty simple algorithm that, by creating step functions with our neurons in the hidden layer and by varying their weight to the output, we are able to create an approximation of mostly any arbitrary function as the one depicted here. I would like to dedicate the last part of this video to talk a little bit about the caveats of this approach. The first caveat is that by using this algorithm we can compute exactly any function and the best we can get is an approximation that is as good as we want. As we have seen, this is done by increasing the number of hidden neurons and implicitly the number of step functions. Secondly, the class of functions that can be approximated are the continuous functions. And if the function has these continuities, then the neural network will not be able to approximate it in most cases. However, in practice, this is not such an important limitation because usually a continuous approximation is good enough. So, a more concise statement of the universality theorem is that neural networks can approximate any continuous function to any desired precision. In addition, this theorem tells us that such an approximation exists, but it doesn't tell us how to compute it. Also, in this video, I touch only the 1D dimension and a more detailed explanation that goes into multiple dimensions is available in the description. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe to be up to date with the new content, and until next time, don't forget to be awesome. See you!